Hi, I'm Pauli Pasanen and I will now introduce you to the first topic of this Equality in a Changing World course. The first topic is air pollutant emissions. In the first video on this topic, I will tell you about the definitions. What is air pollutant? What are emissions? What is it to emit something? And then talk about the relation between emissions and the impacts. So, first of all, what is air pollution? Air pollution is addition of harmful gases or particles to the atmosphere. Air pollutants have adverse health effects or then environmental adverse effects. Pollutants can be gaseous or particulate. Gaseous pollutants are in the air in a form of single molecules. And this means now that the molecule size is something like below one nanometer, meaning one thousandth of micrometer, meaning one millionth of millimeter. So that's the maximum size of a gas molecule. These gaseous pollutants can be, for example, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, organic compounds, ammonia, carbon monoxide, ozone. These are going to be dealt with later on in, during this lecture series. On the other hand, particulate pollutants are aerosol particles. They contain big or huge number of molecules, which can be of many different types and impacts. And the particle sizes vary from few nanometers to hundreds of micrometers. So they span over five orders of magnitude in diameter in their size. When we deal with par particulate pollutants, it's important to understand that the number and mass concentrations do not go hand in hand. For the gaseous pollutants, we can simply look at their concentration, either in mass or number, but for particulate ones, not. And this is because the smallest particles have so, so tiny uh, size and weight that even if they dominate the number concentrations of aerosol particles, they typically contribute negligibly to the total mass of aerosols. Traditionally, the particulate matter pollution has been dealt with uh, particulate matter mass concentrations, PM10, describing mass of particles with diameters smaller than 10 micrometers, where, for example, a dust is an important player in this size range, and then PM2.5, so-called fine particles, which describes the concentration of particles smaller than 2.5 micrometers in diameter. And these mass concentrations are often related to the visible pollution. If we see pollution in the air, it's quite big particles, and then these particulate matter mass concentrations are elevated. On the other hand, the particle number concentration is typically dominated by ultrafine particles, particles with diameters smaller than 0.1 micrometer, meaning smaller than 100 nanometers. And as I said, they are so small that even though they dominate the number concentrations, they typically do not have significant impact on the total mass concentration or the mass concentration of fine particles, PM2.5. Then, what is it to emit? Dictionary says that emit is to send forth liquid, light, heat, sound, particles, etc. Now, when we are talking about atmospheric substances, emission is introduction of some substance into atmosphere. Emissions that we talk about on this course are from anthropogenic sources, anthropogenic now meaning human activities, but of course there are also biogenic emissions from the ecosystem, for example, gases and pollen, and then emissions from other non-anthropogenic sources, for example, volcanoes, dust, or, or sea spray. We have to understand that the emission only describes the source strength of the pollutants. The impacts are related to something like how much we breathe in some compound or how much is deposited on surface or on ground or something like that. So, in other words, the impacts depend on the concentration. And the concentrations do depend on emissions, but also on several other things like transportation, 
which includes now di dilution, transformation, and sinks of the pollutants. So this is air chemistry and physics. And these things are going to be discussed in, in, in the forthcoming lectures of this, this course. Another important thing to understand is that uh, not all pollutants are directly emitted to atmosphere. Some pollutants are formed in the atmosphere, for example, ozone, and significant fraction of the particulate pollution. So when we talk about something that is directly emitted to atmosphere, we talk about primary pollutants. And when something is formed in atmosphere, we talk about secondary pollutants. A few words about units. When we are talking about emissions, the units may have very many different kinds of units. For example, for a passenger car, we often talk about emissions like grams per kilometer, so emissions mass per traveled distance unit. If we talk about national emissions or regional scale emissions, we can talk about emissions per gross domestic production or emissions per capita, which both are useful in, in certain things. But now when we are looking at the air quality, investigating the impacts of pollutants. As I said earlier, the impacts are related to concentrations, and concentrations are dependent on emissions per area. And that's why the emissions per area is a unit that is typically used for understanding and studying air pollution. Finally, where do emissions come from? Combustion is the largest single source of our pollutant emissions. It can be mobile, it can be from power production, industrial combustion, residential heating and cooking. Of course, there are also many other sources of pollutants. Industrial processes produce particles or, or gaseous pollutants. Agriculture, waste treatment, leakages, etc.